have a cursed number of gems and even one more would honestly make this all better. <laughs> Hello, hello. I actually don't know how clapping sounds in this mic anymore because I installed some plugins. You might have noticed from a couple videos ago that I sound a little bit different, a little bit deeper, a little bit bassier. I'm still kind of adjusting things, but you know, when I listen to it in a video or like when I listen to it on stream, it sounds really good. But then sometimes in the video, it sounds a little bit not as good, but let me know what you guys think. Anyway, today we're going to be taking a look at the set 12 sort of set analysis. This is, you know, before we even get into it, this is probably the best set released in Zero. We're currently in going into set 15 and there still hasn't been a set that like first introduced a deck that was like just the best deck for so long. Revengers have been the best deck ever since their release and they're looking to stay that way for a while until they get even more support or we get a new mechanic aka Legion. And on top of that like basically everything else like Novas and Golds and Narukami, maybe not Narukami, and Link Joker got really really good support in it too but more so than anything, Revengers being a deck that you can build straight out of this set and just like have the best deck in the game just like that is absolutely amazing. So let's break it down and talk about all the things in this set. So we're probably going to actually start out with Shadows or Gold. So let's take a look here. So let's start with Golds actually. Let's not hit the bombshell right off the bat. So this is the second set of Liberator support with the focus of Liberator Garmor. So first card we have, of course, is a new starter, which is the Cheer Up Trumpeter. So some of you might remember this. This used to be a really popular starter back in bluish flames which was kind of the second liberator archetype that was much more popular and successful so the skill is if your vanguard is liberator you can put this unit into your soul if you do for that turn your vanguard gains the following ability when your rear guard is placed from your deck for that turn gain 3k so basically you slide it in give your vanguard the skill and then you like superior call superior call superior call and your vanguard gets really really big and then if your vanguard is the guard restrict that's really good for now this won't be that useful but later on in the future this will definitely be a really nice card to have <clears throat> then we have this uh rest to give something plus 2k nothing too fantastic uh, and then of course we have barkle liberator so barkle makes a return as a grade one this time and it is pretty decent actually so when it boosts a blaster blade liberator and the attack hits a vanguard you can check the top three cards of your deck and call a liberator as rest so who would have thought that plus one uh for no cost basically would be good so of course this card is actually really really nice and actually pushed liberators a fair bit and like i know that in global you already you guys already find liberators to be quite the threat quite a good deck you know quite something to look out for and i feel like this set definitely like pushed that even further beyond so it's only gonna get better honestly we're getting another wave of support for it really really soon and damn i never i always forget that i have a really low amount of gold paladin materials it's quite sad Anyway, looking forward, we have some new grade 2s, Kamas 2 to get 4k, that is bad. This card will come up somewhere in G when placed from deck, Soul Charge 1, Counter Charge 1. It is literally an on-call counter charge, which, when the game becomes more generic and less archetype focused, will be pretty good actually. So that is going to be a pretty nice card. Then we have this, the Liberator Bagpiper Angel, when placed from the deck on Rear Circle. If your Vanguard is a Liberator for that turn, give two of your units plus 2k. Still not really that great. Extra power skills generally aren't that fantastic. And then finally, this is the kind of like Liberator clone of on hit Kalmas 2 and draw 1. I've seen a few decks run it. You know, Kalmas 2 draw 1 is pretty good, but this deck is quite Kalmas heavy for the time being. So I don't know. We're going to see. It's going to be interesting to see how that, uh, whether that's going to be used in global or not. In JP, it was not really. So, so far, apart from Barker Liberator, a lot of forgettable cards, I would say. Then we have this uh, during your turn, get 4k on Vanguard Circle, whatever. Uh, when it hits your opponent's vanguard for that turn, give a unit plus 3k, whatever. And then vanguard circle plus 3k if you have more rearguards than your opponent. And then rearguard circle plus 1k if you have more rearguards than your opponent. Again, whatever. Here's a double rare that came out. Uh, this is the Gado, Kado. So limb break 4, vanguard. When it attacks the opponent's vanguard, plus 5k, pretty standard. But the other skill is, when its attack hits a vanguard on the vanguard circle, count plus 1 and call the top card of your deck to an empty rearguard circle. So, sadly it has to be empty, so it is a count plus 1 for plus 1, so maybe in some budget deck, otherwise not really worth saving for. However, Garmor Liberator is actually pretty decent. This card says, let break 4, count plus 2, and then call the top card of your deck to an empty rearguard circle. Repeat this skill until you run out of empty rearguard circles so what this means is that if you ride him and you have like literally nothing on the board like it's just one vanguard you can almost two and just call five so that is actually really really good on top of that he has a skill that when he's placed when you ride him 
until the end of your next turn, you gain the following ability, which says your Liberator Rearguards cannot be retired by your opponent's effect and do not lose intercept. So what this means is that your opponent just cannot retire them. So like Narukami cannot retire them and they cannot remove intercept. Also basically anti Narukami and anti Kagero to an extent. So really, really good card overall just because of that buff. And then he also has a skill that when he attacks on Vanguard Circle, you can put a Liberator Rearguard back to the bottom of the deck to gain 5k. So you can actually return like triggers and stuff like that and then shuffle your deck later on as well, which is actually pretty decent. So pretty good card overall, like Kalmas 2 to fill up your board and then also like on place basically like even if you place him and you have an empty board and then you use the skill to fill it up, those rear guards still get that effect to not be retired and not lose intercept. So really, really good card overall, in my opinion. Definitely push Liberators a lot. They didn't become like tier one levels of good, but pretty damn good, I would say. So overall, a good wave of support. All right, you know what? Let's just get into the nitty gritty. Let's go into Revengers. Like, let's not wait any longer. So Revengers got two starters. One of them is the Spingal Revenger. So when it boosts a limit break for a unit at the end of that battle, put it into the soul to draw card. This is in every single clan basically now. And then on, but usually people still use, you know, Creeping Dark Code for the Great Three Search. However, the new starter that was used a fair bit, but got nerfed and apparently Global is getting it with the nerf is Claudus. So if your Vanguard is a Great Three or higher, you can count on us too. Put him into your soul to search your deck for Blaster Dark Revenger and call it. Kettlebus 2 is way too expensive for just like tutoring out an intercept that will then counter charge if you have a specific grade 1 on the board that can then Kettlebus 2 again to retire something. So this really isn't worth it. This always felt like the trap starter that you're not supposed to be running because Creeping Dark Goat does better. Like just watch my Revenger deck and fight. I really talk about like the starter logic in this. But yeah, apparently Global is getting this post nerf, which is pretty sad. So you don't even get to enjoy it with the Kettlebus 1. Instead, you're going to get it with Kettlebus 2. However, moving on, let's talk about other Revenger Grade Ones. We have the Revenger uh, Burangao, Blangao, maybe. When it boosts the Vanguard, if you have less rearguards than your opponent for that battle, gain 4k. So 10k booster, it's kind of all right. Uh, when it boosts the Break 4 unit, gain 3k. Pretty whatever. So very generic cards. Then this is the Raging Form Dragon Special Booster. So when it boosts a Raging Form, Soul Boss 1, gain 5k. Is not played either. This is the Kalmos 1, gain 1k. Isn't played either. A card that is played, however, is the Dark Bond Trumpeter. So. Dark Bond is actually a really nice card. She's a Revenger and Vanguard Regret Circle when placed can almost one and randomly call one of the Revenger triggers to one of your Regret Circles as rest. So basically, like it takes either the Revenger heal, draw, crit or stand and calls it as rest. So it is just fodder to get retired, but it is really good fodder, to be honest. Then, of course, the Revenger 10k attacker, the Revenger Masquerade. So in the front row, if you have Revenger Vanguard, attack for 10k, really nice. And of course, the PG for Revengers as it as it should be you know as it makes sense and finally doran so doran is the uh counter charger so when blaster dark revenger is placed in the same column as this unit if your vanguard is a revenger counter charge one so really nice card because it lets you just like you can call the blaster dark revenger just to counter charge and not even use blaster dark Revenger's skill so you don't even need to like worry about the candle bus to choose in this deck which is really really nice moving right along all right we got a lot more great twos to look at so on attack camas one get 4k never mind if you have one break four unit, gain 3k, never mind. <laughs> then we have during your turn, if you have more regards, no less regards than your opponent, gain 3k. Still never mind. 10k vanilla for Avengers. We like those. Revenger name is very important. 12k attacker for Avengers, which is the masquerade. So if you have a you know Revenger Vanguard, gain 3k. Then, very important card, Tartu. So Tartu is basically Maka, but retrained for Avengers. So, Rearguard Circle, Vanguard Circle, when placed, if your Vanguard is a Revenger, can almost 1 and search your deck for a Grade 1 or lower Revenger, call it to the same column behind this unit. So, this is a really powerful card. We just looked at some of the Grade 1s you can call from this. You can get the Masquerade, the 10k Attacker. You can get the Doran to then next turn, like, call a Blaster Dark Revenger in the same column to get the Counter Charge. You can also call, for example, Dark Bond, who then can almost 1 to call another card. And there you go. From 1 Grade 2, you got 2 more cards, which is really, really good. So... Tartu definitely an amazing card, a super staple for Avengers. And finally, of course, the sort of trump card of the deck, Blaster Dark Revenger. So this card is pretty simple. When placed, Vanguard Rearguard Circle. If your Vanguard is a Revenger, count us to retire an opponent's rearguard. So doesn't matter if it's front row, back row, whichever, it just retires. And that is absolutely fantastic. So this card is, of course, really good, really important. You know, the deck kind of revolves around him to an extent uh, because of the Dorant and that counter charge engine definitely is a big deal. It is also a rank reward, so don't rush too much 
in terms of like needing to pull him or craft him make sure you actually try to get him from ranked first before needing to craft him that's just my general tip then let's take a look at the grade threes we got a few here as well when your grade three vanguard is placed uh you get he gets plus 10k very cool this is the 15k and 12k attacker then this is a revenger who says when it attacks can almost one gain 3k so revenger name is very important we'll get to that then this is the revenger uh death master dragon vanguard circle when it attacks the vanguard retire rear guard to gain plus 10k actually is run as like a one of sometimes either this or like bad bar car so you still kind of run this sometimes just for the free plus it's a really good rare uh then of course the great two double rare deer mood also we revenger is run like as a four of because it's the basically best heal for the deck and then of course his skill is vanguard circle and break four when he attacks the vanguard retire a revenger rearguard if you do for that battle he gains plus 5k and a crit so you can sometimes just steal gains with him or just force out pg so he just does that as his function and when he attacks the vanguard he also gains plus 3k so 18k on his own is pretty decent and finally let's take a look at the break right first mordred phantom mordred phantom is of course one of the most probably famous units famous cards in all of vanguard that aren't you know like the main three like blood two blasters and dragonic overlord so mordred ridiculously popular card very beautiful looking and so his break right skill is very buffed as well by the way so if you didn't notice tartu instead of Cannon Blast 2 is Cannon Blast 1 this card used to cost Cannon Blast 1 now it costs nothing so when you ride over him for that turn your vanguard gains plus 10k power and then you search your deck for grade 2 or lower card and call it and for that turn that unit gains plus 5k this used to cost Cannon Blast 1 it no longer does so you can basically call Tartu off of this, then use Tartu to call Dark Bond, Dark Bond Effect. So from just break riding, you got three units on the board for essentially two Cannon Blasts. So yeah, that's really good. That's really, really good. So yeah, this break ride is amazing. And of course, it ties in perfectly with the boss card, which is Revenger Raging Form Dragon. So Raging Form has... Uh, let's look at the second skill first. Uh, so third skill says... When he attacks the Vanguard plus 3k, this is actually relevant sometimes. Then his second skill says, Retire 3 Revenger Rearguards to add a Raging Form Dragon to your hand. And it's not added from the deck, by the way. It is created and added from nothingness. So that is basically giving you a Persona Blast copy. Why are you Persona Blasting? Well, the first skill, which says, Vanguard Circle and Break 4 when he attacks for that battle gain the following ability. Which means that you cannot heal out of it because he gains the ability even if you go down to 3 damage. So it says, at the end of the battle on Vanguard Circle, retire three of your Revenger Rearguards, and if you do, ride a Raging Form Dragon from your hand as stand, draw two cards, and for that turn, your Vanguard gains plus 10k. So of course, you basically go swing with your rears, swing with more rears, swing with your Vanguard, and then retire like three of your back row, and then just ride Raging Form again and swing again. So four attacks every turn, sounds good. Don't have another Raging Form in hand? No problem, just retire three to add one to hand. Turns out it's not even that bad or that heavy as a cost either. So yeah, this deck is by far the best, I would say, and it's been the best for a really long time. I think there's been very few decks outside of like MLB and the end maybe that stayed good for this long, and people don't seem to be that sick of it either, which is pretty interesting because I guess it's just because the meta is really diverse. Like this, this is the best deck, but a lot of other decks are still really really impressive and really really good all right up next narukami got some support as well in this set it's pretty small but it's still worth taking a look at so we got a vowing sword star starter so this starter says if you have a eradicator vanguard when your opponent's rearguard is retired if you have a vowing vanguard you can put this into your soul to then for that turn give your vanguard plus 3k and a crit so this is just for Vowing Sword based decks, but honestly, people still kind of run the Linchu because Linchu is just a really good starter, and you guys are probably well aware of that. Uh, do we get any new Grade 1s? I feel like we did not outside of... No, I don't think we did. I think there was no new Grade 1s. We did get a new Grade 2, though. That much I'm definitely aware of because we got this guy, which is the Lawrence Force Dragon. So he says, when your Grade 3 Vanguard, uh, Eradicator Vanguard, is placed, Cannon Blast 1 and retire an opponent's rearguard at random. So this is basically like, you know how um, Jewel Knights have the Tilda, which basically like when you ride, Cannon Blast 1, search a Jewel Knight. This is basically the same, but for Eradicators. This does show up in quite a few lists because people just play it on, on turn 2 in the back row and then just like ride their Grade 3 and then just pop stuff for Cannon Blast 1, which is better cost uh in terms of like cost for retire than most other retires they usually cost count 2 you know looking at you for example so it's actually pretty damn decent 
God, I just realized that we have more Eradicator support in, in Japanese coming up as well. Anyway, so that's the one card that they got. This was actually played back in the TCG, but Vowing in, in, in the end wasn't very impactful. I'll just put it that way. So, of course, Vowing Saber Reverse is the uh, cross break ride, basically, the reverse unit for Narukami. Also, the first reverse unit we're taking a look at in this set analysis. So, he is, of course, a cross ride with Vowing Sword. So, this is the break ride. And his skill is his second skill first says, if you have retired three of your opponent's rearguard this turn, three or more rearguards this turn, gain an extra crit. So that's actually really big. He never had that. That is a buff. And it's actually still really nice, despite the fact that it's not that great. It's kind of there to kind of make it so that you don't play Gauntlet Buster and you play this instead. But Gauntlet Buster ended up being better anyway. So that's kind of a yikes. But anyway, his first skill is Cannon Boss 1 and lock two of your Eradicator rearguards. So you can't lock stuff like Rising Phoenix. If you do, for that turn he gains plus 10k, and then you randomly retire two of your opponent's rearguards, prioritizing the back row. So, you basically, you pop one with a break ride, pop two with his skill, and then he gets the extra crit from his second skill. So, this, people hyped it up when it was coming out, and everybody thought it was going to be like really, really good, but it turned out to be kind of meh, kind of lukewarm, um, and people just stuck with the regular Eradicator list. So, if you're already playing Eradicators and you have a full deck with like, you know, Gauntlet Buster, Descendant, you don't really need to bother with this. You're one of Steve will actually be a little bit better. Uh, maybe you want to play a Lawrence Force or two, but that's about it. So Eradicator's got a little bit of support, but it wasn't necessarily that great, which is a little bit unfortunate. All right, before we take a look at the other big, big support from this set, which is Link Joker, let's look at Nova's real quick. So Nova's, uh, this is their other wave of support. So I need to make sure not to mistake now. Did Riot Horn come out this set? I believe it did. Riot Horn says that when your unit with Beastie in its name stands in the same column as this unit, you can also stand him. So if you stand a rear guard in the in front of him, he also stands. So just a standing booster. It's pretty decent, I guess, but a lot of people still use like the Great Three Searcher, for example, or just switch to him. Or if it's like an Ethics Buster Extreme deck list. And then we have the Knight Jackal. So this says when he stood during your battle phase, gains 4k. So it's pretty nice because, you know, if you stand him in the battle phase, even if he's on rearguard circle, that's also pretty damn nice. So he is actually beast deity, which is also pretty cool. You know, looks very beast deity like, but sadly isn't actually played. Then passing by the Blau support, let's take a look at the other beast deity support. We got the Max Beat. Max Beat is actually a really nice card. When he stood in your battle phase, if you have a beast deity vanguard, count must one and stand another rearguard of yours. So. Of course, Beast Deity stand your board a lot, and you know, as we know from Ethics Buster. And so basically, if you stand him, you also get to stand something in front of him or behind him. So that's also quite cool. And overall, it's a really great card. Also, Beast Deity's got a 10k attacker grade one, which is of course basically the industry standard at this point. So that's that for the grade ones. Then for the grade twos, let's take a look. I want to say I'm pretty sure the 10k vanilla had come out earlier. The 12k attacker might have for Beast Deities, I think it did. And I'm pretty sure Brainy Papio did not. So Brainy Papio is the new support. Or actually, maybe it did. Maybe they did come. I can't remember anymore. But Brainy Papio is the definitely new support for BCDs. This card is actually really good. He's a good monkey. We really like this monkey. He's very strong. Very great. When his attack hits a Vanguard, if you have a BCD Vanguard, count must one and stand one of your rear guards. So this allows for some early rush because you can stand stuff like the Golden Anglet that gets extra power immediately, which is obviously really, really nice. And so he's just a great card overall, like definitely a four of in Beast Deities in my opinion. And so you can check out my, I've done videos on those decks so you can check them out as well. And then finally, grade threes, none other than the two Ethics Busters. So Ethics Buster Extreme is the good cop versus the bad cop Ethics Buster Reverse. So let's look at Extreme first. Extreme says, when you drive check a grade two or lower beast deity, you can stand a rear guard. If you cannot stand a rear guard for that turn, choose a rear guard and give it 5k instead. So for example, if you break ride him over the original ethics buster that stands your front row, and then you don't have any other like rear guards to stand, you just pump them with more power, which sometimes is the better play. So it's pretty cool. And it does say grade two or lower so that if you check a trigger, you get rewarded by the trigger rather than, you know, standing and getting a trigger. He also gets 3k when boosted and he is of course a cross ride with ethics buster. So this card is all right. It's more of a fun deck to be honest and especially with certain decks that retire your stuff or lock your stuff uh this isn't the best deck to be playing right now it might get better over time honestly it didn't really in the tcg it was always kind of like the alternative to ethics was to reverse which was just way more powerful with the break ride so this goes really well with the break ride whereas this card can carry itself on its own without the break ride that's like the big difference so ethics was to reverse says cannabis 2 on uh, once per turn 
lock one of your rear guards and discard two beast deities. So you can lock any rear guard, but you have to discard beast deities, so be careful about that. And then for that turn, gain the following ability. Once per turn, at the end of the battle, you can stand this unit and draw two cards. So you discard in the main phase, but then you draw in the battle phase, so it kind of makes up for that. So really cool card. He also gets plus 5k every time you drive check a grade 3 or higher beast deity. So he rewards you for triggers even more so, which is pretty cool. Like each trigger here becomes like 10k if you give it all to Vanguard. So of course, this card goes really well with the break ride because you basically you swing with him, restand your front row, then restand him, then your front row swings two more times, swing with him again, restand your front row again, and swing two more times again. So if you have like Golden Anglet and Yamato no Drake in the front row, they're gonna restand a bunch of times and get super powerful. So that is definitely really, really, really good. So make sure you have this. I've told you before, it is a really important card for Nova. So that's actually it for the nova support here so i would say ethics buster reverse is a really really good deck like it's actually really fun really strong it's basically like ethics blau but more stable just like how blouse as a deck are also more stable so you basically need ethics buster reverse extreme maybe is like a one of uh brainy papio is very important in my opinion as well and then in the grade ones they're just rare so i mean you're gonna get them naturally so it's nothing really to stress about so that's it for novas and finally let's take a look at Inkajoka. So this is the clan that of course everyone was afraid of, everyone was terrified of, and was just, you know, like, always thinking that they're gonna lose, 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 lose. But what do you know? It's actually not that scary. That's what turned out to be the case. All right, so I have a lot of SPs because I pulled a lot of packs this set and I just randomly pulled SPs. Anyway, uh, here's a starter that we use these days, which is the White, White Knight Fenrir. So his skill is when a boost limit 4 unit, put him into the soul at the end of the battle to draw a card. Yes, we use this starter, I'm not kidding. <laughs> then this is the Kalamas 1, put into soul, checked out 5 for grade 3, so grade 3 searcher. This is the put him into the soul to give something plus 3k, trash. Uh, then this is the uh, when your opponent's card is locked by your card's ability, then you can basically return this unit to your hand. Very interesting, not really useful. And then the two starters I saw a lot of use when this set came out, and then one starter got nerfed really bad is the uh, Starvator Dust Tail Unicorn. I don't know if this card is coming in nerfed, but the unnerfed version of this card is if your opponent has a locked card on the board. And if you don't know what lock is, by the way, I should probably mention that. Lock is a mechanic that basically says you choose an opponent's rear guard, put it face down. So it basically just goes face down. And the circle that that unit is in is basically just locked. You cannot call over it. You cannot retire it. You cannot touch it. You can't do anything with it. And it unlocks at the end of the owner's turn. So if you are playing Link Joker and you lock your opponent's card, they will unlock that card at the end of their turn. So then you can relock it again during your turn. So that's kind of how it works. So this card says if your opponent has a locked card, you can come us one, put this unit to your soul to originally it said lock one of your opponent's rear guard. So you could also lock the front row. However, now it says you can only lock your opponent's back row. So it got nerfed over time. I'm not sure if the back row locking nerfed one is coming in now or if you get the full power one first. But even with the full power one, it was still a good card. A lot of people still consider this to be an unnecessary nerf that just did to like just gave more damage to the deck that it was already not doing that great to begin with. But yeah, I mean, Bushi does as Bushi pleases. And finally, we have the um, Micro Hole Drag Draco Kid. So this is the Schwarz Shield Ride Chain Starter. So when you ride the Grade 1 uh, Gravity Ball Dragon, then you get to check top 7 for a Gravity Collapse or a Schwarz Shield Dragon added to your hand. If you did not find one, then you call this card out. And then if you ride any other Grade 1 over him, you also get to call him out. So pretty standard Ride Chain Starter. Uh, PGs, of course, you know, pretty pretty standard. Uh, let's see the grade ones here. When it boosts Limerick 4, you gain 3k, very generic. This one is when it boosts a Nebula Lord, Soul Blast 1 to gain 5k. So Nebula Lord, of course, one of the main grade 3s for the deck as of now. This is the when it boosts and attack hits, you can discard one, draw one. This one is actually used. I still see this even in Chaos deck list right now. So this card is actually going to be useful. So do keep an eye on it in some lists. This is the self-damager, so Link Joker, of course, gets a self-damager. 8k Vanilla, because they need one, which looks like Blaster Dark, you know. I mean, it looks like Blaster Blade, but corrupted, so a lot of people like this design. I, I also really liked it, too. This card is still used, the Lantern, so basically, when your opponent's card is locked by your uh, effect, then for that turn, gain 3k, so every time you lock something, he gets plus 3k, so he can actually become pretty swole, which is quite good. Then this is the uh, on-place rearguard circle. If your opponent uh, has two or less rearguards, you can discard one, draw one. So just there for the filter. I think it was run back at the start, but it kind of fell off over time. And here is the gravity ball dragon. So this is the right chain. So plus 1k if you have the start in the soul. And then when a grade 2 that is not gravity collapse rides over him, you check top 7 to find the gravity collapse. So also a, you know, good 
grade one. That's all I'm going to really say. All right, going into grade twos, we have plus four, count plus one, plus four K. We don't like that. Self damager, cool. Uh, gain three K if you have one break four unit, whatever. Then finally, a good grade two. This is the Singularity Sniper. So when she hits an opponent's Vanguard, if your opponent has a locked card, you can lock another one. So this is lock without any cost, which is quite rare. So definitely a really nice card. Saw some play uh, in pretty much like all renditions of Link Joker for some time and only recently like got properly dropped. Then this card also saw play uh, way back in the first wave, so in set 12, which says if your opponent has a locked card, gain 3k. So this is not during your turn, which means that it is going to be 11k on both players' turns as long as there's a locked card in play, which can get pretty pesky if your opponent locks your boosters all the time and you don't have 12k attackers. So keep those 12k attackers in hand, boys. Make sure you keep those 12k attackers in hand. Then uh, Neobium basically says... When your opponent's regard is locked by your card effect, he gains 3k. So just like the grade 1, you know, just get some power from locks, which is nice. Then this is the 10k vanilla, pretty self-explanatory. On hit, Kalmas 2, draw a card. Not a Star Vader, so keep that in mind, but not really played. 2 Kalmas heavy for a deck that already Kalmas a lot. And then this is a very important grade 2, the Mobius Breath Dragon. So ever, ever since Zero came out, people were like, oh, when Link Joker comes out, Mobius Breath will be great. And it is great. That's correct. It is actually great. This card says Vanguard Circle only. When his attack hits an opponent's vanguard, you choose an opponent's rearguard and lock it. So most of the time you'll be locking their starter, and if your opponent is kind of like careless or they're not like careful enough, then you will lock their front row, which is always great. Some people even stick to grade, they just sit on grade 2 if they don't have the right grade 3 and just keep locking stuff. Like they don't care about going to grade 3, they just sit on this and keep locking stuff. But depends of course on your hand and the situation of the game. Finally we have the Gravity Collapse, so of course he's 10k if you have the Gravity Ball in the soul. And when you ride him, if you have the Gravity Ball in your soul, which is the grade 1, then you lock an opponent's rearguard. So it's basically the same as Mobius Breath, except this one is just when you ride, whereas this one is when you hit. So pretty cool. I mean, you have to run a ride chain for this one, whereas the other one is universal. So, of course, one of them is more flexible. All right, and then let's look at the grade 3s. This is the Twilight Baron. So 15k attacker on Vanguard, 12k attacker on rearguard. Of course, you know, sometimes played. This is the gain 10k when you are when you place your grade 3 vanguard. This one is when you attack vanguard, gain 2k, so 12k attacker, nothing too special. Now we get into the actual good cards. So let me actually look at the break ride first. So this is the uh, infinite zero dragon. I should probably show the normal art first. So infinite zero is a very, very popular break ride as well. They did nerf it though, because at, uh, before he didn't cost any Cattle Blast. Now he says, when you break right over him, Cattle Blast 1, give your Vanguard plus 10k, and then choose an opponent's front row and back row rearguard and lock them. So Cattle Blast 1, lock 2 is really, really good. And basically like this break right makes your opponent just not attack you at all. Like they will just not give you 4 damage, not let you break right unless they can actually murder you before you can get to that break right point. And so... This is a super powerful break ride, and a lot of people are very terrified of it because if you lock a bunch of stuff, you can do a bunch of stuff. And of course, your opponent doesn't really get to uh, play the game because if you lock their front row, then they don't have interceptors and they cannot call new interceptors there either. So you can swing face more often too. So be very careful when playing against Link Joker. Just keep that in mind. Then let's take a look at the Schwarz Shield. So this is the right chain. So of course, gains 1k if you have Gravity Collapse in your soul. And then Vanguard Circle in place, Cattle Blast 1, add a Schwarz Shield to your hand. So he adds himself to the hand, not from the deck, but he creates it out of thin air, kind of like Raging Form does, because his first skill says, Limit Break 4, Cattle Blast 3 and Persona Blast to choose 3 of your opponent's regards and lock them, and then gain 10k in a crit. So if you do both skills, that's Cattle Blast 4 in total, Cattle Blast 5 with a Break Ride if you want to lock 5 for whatever reason, but this is meant to be basically like something that triangle, like triangle lock, so like two front rows and the back row behind the opponent's vanguard, basically is like the maximum amount of like, like op optimal locks, I guess, because you turn down both of their attacks and you also make it so that their vanguard can't be boosted. So if you have like a chunky rear guard or whatever, they can't even hit that. But it's honestly, uh, it's good. It was good when it released, but it has fallen out of favor ever since Chaos Breaker came out. But it was definitely a good card, but it is also going to be a rank reward. So keep that in mind. And finally, uh, let's take a look at the backup grade 3, which is the Knight of Entropy. Still is run sometimes to this day. This card is actually quite decent. Uh, Lumbric 4 when tax Vanguard gains 5k, and Vanguard Circle when placed, can almost to lock an opponent's rearguard. So sometimes your opponent will just be like calling down front row rears and like trying to rush you. You just pull the rug from under them and just ride this, lock their front row rearguard, and now they're missing an interceptor, missing an attacker, and they get punished for being cocky. And that card is actually 
pretty damn decent in my opinion. And finally, the boss unit that's going to be kind of the boss unit for now until Chaos Breaker comes out is the Nebula Lord Dragon. So Nebula Lord says his second skill is Kalmas 1 and lock an opponent's back row rearguard. So that's actually pretty all right. It's pretty decent. You can lock some annoying things down there like a starter. And his first skill is at the beginning of your battle phase, limb break four. For that turn, for each of your opponent's locked cards, your front row units gain plus 3k. And then if your opponent has three or more locked cards, draw a card. So as you'll probably have noticed from all the cards we've looked at, this clan doesn't have natural card draw. The only natural card draw is Nebula Lord and the on-hit Kalmas 2 to draw that nobody plays. So you have to be very careful with your resources in this deck because you don't plus much outside of like Nebula Lord. So you have to be really, really careful to not lose those resources and just like just be on your toes sometimes. Don't call down too many things. Be very careful when you play this deck because until Chaos comes out, I mean, even with Chaos, to be honest, you still have to be really careful because it's overcosted as hell. But Nebula Lord especially, like it is something you need to work towards to actually like keep that momentum going of the extra draws. But yeah, I think that's actually it. We took a look at everything. That was uh, quite a fair bit. It's a chonky set. It's a really, really good set. So of course, this has a lot of really important cards for Link Joker. This is still run as a one of sometimes. This is a four of. This is a four of heal trigger for the time being. Schwachil kind of got dropped over time. And then Mobius Breath, of course, very important. You need like a three of at least. You know, the rares I'm gonna like just skip over because not that important. PGs, of course, very important. And then everything else is more new stuff. I think I already talked about the must haves in uh, Nova's, Narukami, overall kind of lukewarm. Garmar, I think, is a good card to have together with Barco Liberator. And then for Revengers, of course. Basically everything, you know, these doubles are really important. And then if we look at the grade twos, I mean, like, Blaster Arc Revengers is really important. Tar 2 is super important. And Revengers will keep getting support in, like, many, many, many sets to come. So, like, Legion, it, again, in Breakride era, even in G is going to get support. So it's worth to invest in. It's going to be a deck that lasts you for a really long time. So sadly, it's quite expensive. You need quite a few triples. You need, like, basically all the doubles. And, like, yeah, you need, like... Four Mordred, four Raging Form, four of this guy, and then you need four of Blaster Dark Avenger, four Tartu, four Masquerade, and then four Doran, four PG. So I hope you've saved well. I had to save a lot to craft this deck when it came out and also pull a lot of packs. So keep that in mind. Also, Nemain is still run, so if you have those, that's good. If not, you can kind of go by without it, but it is going to become a better deck if you have at least one or two Nemains. But anyway, on that note, though, that's basically going to be it for me today. Let's sign off on good old Mordred over here. So hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. God, I'm like, I've been going at it nonstop, just talking that I can barely like say words anymore. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. Hope you enjoyed this set analysis as well. Of course, I'll be opening my packs of set 15 on my Twitch channel at um, about 9 a.m. CET. I'm planning 150, 200-ish packs. I'm not too sure just yet, but I'll decide on that and then we'll see what we do when I go live. But of course, you know, I'm trying to pull for quite a few of the decks in the set, like Jewel Knights and other stuff that are coming up in set 15. But hopefully you guys in global have good luck with your set 12 packs because You'll probably need it. You'll probably need it. And this is definitely a very hype set. I would say this is not a skippable set. Like if you want a deck that will be good for you for a really long time, just invest in Revengers, honestly. And it's really easy to pilot, very aggro, very like hard to get punished for. It's just really, really good. But anyway, that'll be it for me today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.